hey there, good looking. Join me for this total body strength workout that is going to hit four pillars of foundational strength. Our push muscles, our pull muscles, our hinge muscles, and our squat muscles. And if you're part of the 21 day fit and fierce challenge, welcome to day 16. Now listen, you need some tools for this workout. So please grab some tubing. It can have handles or no handles. doesn't matter. And what you consider a pair of heavy dumbbells for reference. I have a pair of 15s. I also recommend if you're a beginner, if you find pushups challenging to have a chair nearby so we can elevate your hands or the side of your couch or coffee table, or even a bench. All right, let's go get warmed up. Hi there and welcome. My name is PJ Ren and I've been a certified personal trainer for almost three decades, helping people over the age of 40 get fit. So I'm so happy you hopped on. Now you can find me on fitnesswithpj.com and I'm also the creator and lead trainer of over50fitness.co. Now how about we get warmed up and I'll chat about this uh, push pull hinge squat workout. Yeah. Awesome. Feet apart. We'll start with the arms taken into the shoulders. I want you to go backwards with them and really exaggerate your range of motion. So nice and big. So yeah, movement patterns actually can be um, based on those four movements. So your push muscles, pushing things away from your body, your pull muscles, pulling them towards you, hinging from the hip and then squatting. And there's also another one, carry. Now we will be hitting the carry muscles because we'll be holding onto dumbbells. So we'll focus on all those alternating between each one for three rounds, two circuits. All right, open and close. So this is a pretty heavy duty strength workout. So I am so happy you hopped on, especially because the time's a little longer than my normal workouts. So bravo, thank you. Last three and two and one. All right, single leg kick, take an arm out and kick it up, working into the hamstrings and glutes here. Good, we have eight. Let's do three more. Other side. Try to get that hand up there. We're trying to get the foot to the hand, not the hand down to the foot. So you want to feel that in the back of your thigh. Two more. Last one, release. All right, I want you to inhale, bring the arms up, exhale, hinge forward, grab onto the toes, drop the bucket all the way down. All right, I want you to keep the heels on the ground, shift it side to side, warming up into those ankle joints. Go down as low as you can, but I want you to try and work yourself all the way down deep. Now take the arms straight up and press up and let's do it again. Here you go, down, grab onto the toes, lower, heels on your mat. If you'd like, you can even push the elbows on the inside of the knees, open up the hips a bit more. And then again, shift it side to side. Arms up, press up, two more. This is a really deep stretch. If you've been part of the Fit and Fierce Challenge, you know that I like this. Um, I wouldn't call it a stretch, pardon me. Warm up drill. It hits everything, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, T-spine. Last one. And press it up. Fingers light behind the ears, feet hip width apart. Let's soften those knees, learn our hinge pattern. We take it from that hip joint, push the hips back. So I want you to grab on or maybe slide your hands if you're unfamiliar with hinging. Bring it just the top of the leg and that's where you want to bend forward from. All right. So once you've got that established, get the hands back behind the ears, not pushing on the head. So we'll be doing couple of different movements here in the workout which will make you hinge through the hip joint creating the glutes and the hamstrings and hips to fire up good last two one more beautiful come to the end of the mat we have some walkouts if this doesn't work for you I'd love for you to hold a high plank from the toes or the knees here we go walk it out wrists under shoulders walk it back Three more. Last one. Last one. 
And come to the center, finish off with some side lunges to get the lateral hip fired up. Step out, keep yourself squared to me. See if you can reach across and tap the toe. We're reaching across by hip hinging, there's that hip hinge, and bending the knees. Your toes, knees, hips, and shoulders stay square to me. So we're not gonna rotate to this leg stepping out. Great job, you. Let's do four more. One more each side. And shake it out. All right. We're gonna begin the workout if you need a sip of water. Now is the best time to do it. All right, as you sip, take a look at the first exercise. It's a push-up with a shoulder tap. Beginners, elevate your hands using a chair, and you'll see in the mini-me screen there that I'll be doing that. But we can do push-ups from the knees if you'd like, and then come up off of the knees to tap each shoulder, and then down on the knees. Or if you're able to do a really clean-looking push-up from the toes, go for it. All right, we have 40 seconds on the clock, so let's get set up. Wrist just a bit wider than shoulders. Here we go, take it down. High plank, tap each shoulder, good. So when you come down in your push-up, don't splay the elbows out. They're gonna be pointed to the back of your mat slightly. That'll protect your shoulder joint. It's gonna make it harder, yes, I know, sorry. But it will protect the shoulder. We're gonna grab our exercise tubing and stand for the next exercise. So this is our push exercise. So we're pushing our body weight away from the floor. Tap it, time. All right, get your tubing. And this will be your pull exercise now for your back muscles, biceps, and shoulders. Let's take the arms straight up, soften the knees. Now pull one elbow in towards the rib cage, back to center, and then the other arm. So if you need it to be uh, more intense, just walk your hands closer together. Hopefully my band doesn't break. If you were with me the other day, <laughs> we had the tubing break on me on a workout. I want you to bend the elbow so we do get the um, biceps involved and then really tighten up your core. We're grabbing onto one dumbbell for our next exercise. Woo. So you're gonna feel this even on the supporting arm, right? Because it's having to hold the tubing there as you pull it away. All right, grab onto your dumbbell. You're gonna hold on to the very end. This is our hinge exercise. Feet shoulder width apart, come through the legs, hinge through the hips, so there's not a lot of knee bend, and wood chop this dumbbell right up above. So allow a little bit of momentum here. And then again, focus on pushing your tush rear, just like we did in the warm up, but it's just a tad faster. If you feel this in your low back, get rid of the dumbbell and perfect the hip hinge. That tells me then that you're rounding your back a bit and you're moving through that waistband instead of through the hip joint. 10 more seconds. So again, focus on the hip hinge. Time, not a knee bend. Now grab the partner to that dumbbell, taking it into our squat pattern. So feet are shoulder width apart. We'll put a little emphasis on the quadricep on this one. Shoulders back and down and just push the bum back and drive up. I actually don't know how many times we do just a regular squat in my workouts. <laughs> so this is a basic movement pattern though. Everything from getting in and out of your car, getting off of the couch, getting off of the toilet, it's all squats. So those are our movement patterns. We have three rounds of these. In less than 20 seconds, we take it back to that push-up. So we alternate push movement, pull movement, hinge movement, squat movement. And that's how we roll today. Let's do one more. Time, all right. So, push up, and again, elevate your hands if you're finding the push ups challenging. Hands are just a bit wider than shoulders. Don't splay those elbows up. Okay, so fingertips pointed to the top of your mat. Now, give me a push up. If you're on the knees like me, come into high plank and tap each shoulder. 
So I have you tapping each shoulder just to limit how many push-ups we do. We want to keep the form for all three sets, but by tapping the shoulder, we work a lot of core and deep shoulder stabilizers as well. Pay attention to those fingertips. They should be pointed to the top of your mat. Let's see if we can get one more push up in. Time. Woo. All right, grab your tube. I like to wrap it around my hand a couple of times so the handles don't go swinging into my head. Start up. Now we want knees soft, abs engaged. Pull one down, then the other. Good, so you need to really be rooted in the core area to really be successful with this move. Like I said, now we've got our pull muscles activated. So note that when you have one side, such as our push muscles, the opposite muscle groups, or the opposing muscle groups, aren't really working. So this is why we can superset upper body here. One more. Time. Whew. All right, wood chop. So once again, we want to hinge through the hips and it's just a slight bend of the knee and then drive the dumbbell up towards shoulder height. Ready and up. So it's not a big knee bend. It's a hinge pattern, working into that posterior chain of the body and getting the heart rate up. <laughs> Draw that belly button in towards the spine. Good. Almost there. One more, time. Okay, dumbbell in each hand. Beginners, if you're finding it too much, you can hold on to one dumbbell here up in the chest. We call that goblet style. Otherwise, feet shoulder width apart, dumbbell in each hand. Squat, pushing your bum rearward like you're trying to seek out a chair. Great, now let's perfect it further. Pretend you're on newspaper and you're trying to rip it in the center. So that's gonna activate the hip muscles so the knees track in the correct direction for us. Now shoulders pulled back and down. Especially important to think about if you've got a dumbbell in each hand, those dumbbells are gonna to wanna to pull the shoulders forward. So, are you splitting that newspaper? Okay, good. <laughs> Not that there's a lot of newspapers around, are there? <laughs> Time. All right, final round. Everything's online. Killing the newspaper business. Okay, push up, shoulder tap. Elevated with the hands if you'd like. Keep those elbows in. Fingertips to the top of your mat. Here we go. Chest to ground. High plank. Tap it. Good. So pecs, anterior deltoid, triceps. And push-up is actually a moving plank as well, so all those deep core muscles fired up. Here we go, shoulder taps, and then we're done. Time, woo! All right, grab your tube. Take a look for any stress fractures <laughs> so it doesn't bust on you. Here we go. Abs engage, knees are soft, pull down, whoo, pull down, nice. Try to keep that one arm still that's anchoring the tube as you pull down the other arm. 
lead with the elbow, coming in towards the rib cage. Shoulders are pulled back and down. Nice. Time. Whew. Shake it out. All right. Wood chop. So grab the dumbbell. Again, it's that hip hinge, okay? So right up here in the hip crease, that's where you want to go. All right? Yeah? <laughs> that's how I zoom in. <laughs> We're really technical here. <laughs> Draw that belly button in the spine, especially if you're starting to get a little achy in that low back. All right, activate that deep core muscle. Sit that bum back, drive the hips forward. One more. Time, Whew. All right, squat and then we move on. Here we go, so feet just shoulder width. We're not going too wide on this one. Shoulders pulled back and down. Again, it's a hinge too with this squat. We've got to hinge first and then we seek the bum back and bend the knees. And then we also have the carry too. I mentioned earlier that that's another foundational movement pattern, the carry. Here we go. Crosby, Stills and Nash just came into my head. Carry on my wayward son. Sorry for that. <laughs> I think that's Crosby, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. You'll let me know. I know. <laughs> so we take it on the ground with our dumbbells for a chest press. Give me one more squat. And release. Okay, so let's take it down. Let's slide the elbows so they're slightly ahead of the shoulders. Wrists over elbows. Now press the dumbbell straight up and lower. Do it again. Beautiful. So now we're doing our push muscles. So new grouping of movements, starting with the push. Tapping the dumbbell so they end above the upper abdomen, not, a, not the head. Getting those pecs and to your deltoid, triceps fired up again. Slow and controlled with your speed. If you can go really fast, then we need heavier dumbbells. Time. All right, going to teach you a new one. This is a really cool pull muscle, pull exercise. On all fours, dumbbell under the left hand, extend the opposite leg out, and then row up. So it's a bird dog row. So let's give it a try. Opposite arm to the leg that's lifted, rows up. Good. Now, if you're having a hard time, you can bring the other arm, the other hand under the dumbbell, and that's going to enable you to straighten that arm. So we want to keep that right leg elevated, as lined up with your floor as you think it is. I like tucking the back toe of this left foot. That helps me with my balance. And now we're working pull muscles as well as a ton of core. Woo! Last 10 seconds and then you know it, we do the other side. Time, woo! All right, so knees apart under your hips. There's your setup. Hands on both dumbbells, okay? Right under the shoulders, extend your left leg now. Get it level with your ground. Tuck your right toe under, find that balance, find that stability. Now row the right arm up and lower. I'm surrounded right now by sleeping dogs. Both my dogs are crashed and they're snoring. <laughs> If you believe in reincarnation, you want to come back as one of my pets. <laughs> You're treated really well. You live your best life. <laughs> well, I slave away here, sweating, making money so that they can sleep in the comfort that they're accustomed to. Time. Woo. All right. We're going to learn a, a single leg dumbbell clean. Okay. This one's advanced, but I have faith in us. Dumbbell, I want you just to mirror me. All right. Mirror me. Take that same leg, lift it off the ground. Now you want to start with a hinge, 
Hinge, bring the dumbbell down to the laces, and then drive up. All right, so let's lower the dumbbell. Here we go. Hinge, explode up. Now, if you need to kick stand because this one leg thing just isn't working for you, go for it. All right, so it's a hinge, drive. Let's try that again. Hinge, drive. Good. So this kind of looks like a one-legged squat, right? Remember I mentioned with our previous squat pattern that there is a hinge happening in the squat. All right. Other side. Whew. So find your balance. Focus your chair on something stationary. Let's start with the hinge first. So we soften the knee. We hip hinge, bring the dumbbell down, and then we drive up. drive up. Good. So this is my unsteady leg. So I'm going to be dropping my other one down periodically to help me out. <laughs> if you're really struggling, right, go by a wall, hold on to a wall. But we're not going to get a lot of reps in on this one. I don't want you to. Probably eight to 10 clean looking ones is what we're aiming for in the 40 seconds. Time. All right, one dumbbell or both of them if you're advanced. Now we go wide with our squat pattern, plie. So feet wide, toes turned out. Dumbbells held close to the body, whether it's one or two. Squat low, push through the heels, drive up. Good. So when we go wide with the feet, we want to make sure that we rotate the toes out so that the knees and the toes all track in the same direction. So here's our final foundational movement pattern, the squat. Take it back to the chest press, our push exercise in about 15 seconds. See if we can get that, uh, those elbows to touch the tops of your legs, keeping the upper body fairly upright. Time. Whew. All right, here we go, chest press. So our setup, just another reminder, our elbows in front of the shoulders, okay? That's just a safety um, technique for the shoulder joint. Straighten the arms and lower. When we lower down, we just lower to the ground. So this teaches you how low you drop those elbows. So if you're on a bench or stability ball, you would just go to as if you were on the ground. When we let the elbows drop past the shoulders too much, it creates a lot of instability in the shoulder joint, especially the heavier we lift. I don't mind a little drop past the shoulder if you're on a bench or ball, but not too much. Time. All right, bird dog rows. Let's get the dumbbells under each hand and then get the hands positioned right under the shoulders. All right, once you've got that, let's get the toes tucked under, knees apart under hips. Now straighten your right leg, opposite arm lifts up. Good. Pardon me. You're going to look just ahead of yourself there, so I'm looking just past the top of my mat. And obviously we've got a lot of glute fired up to keep this leg elevated. Your low back extensors are fired up, core muscles, deep ab muscles. Can you get that back leg up a little higher? Might have dropped a bit, might have forgotten about it. <laughs> Let's do one more row. Time. All right, I'm going to grab a quick sip of water. We've got the other side to do. So knees under hips, straighten your left leg now, opposite arm, rows up. So now these are our pull muscles, we're pulling the dumbbell towards us. Steady your breathing.
One more rep. Time. All right. Standing. Dumbbell in your right hand, okay? It's the opposite leg that's going to be doing the work. This guy can either kickstand or dead weight. So again, you hinge, drive up, okay? Hinge, drive up. This one's not easy. As you can tell, I've stopped talking. <laughs> I gotta focus. <sighs> Time. So I got eight clean ones in, so I'm happy with that. How'd you do? Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> I wish you could talk back to me. <laughs> Actually, no, because I know some of you swear at me <laughs> in the workouts, which, you know, I got a thick skin, but. <laughs> I'd rather hear from you in the comments after the cool down and when you're all happy again. <laughs> so hinge and then bend, bend the knee. So it, it is, it, it is a one-legged squat, essentially. But we start that movement pattern up here in the hip. Let's do one more. Time. All right, plie squat. So our feet are wide, remember? Wider than shoulders, and then we're gonna turn those toes out. Find your inner ballerina. One or two dumbbells, shoulders back and down. Stay upright in the upper body and come straight down. Push through the heels, drive up. Oops, just lost my balance. So it'll be a slight lean forward. You're not completely upright. Unless you are a ballerina, then yeah, you'll be able to do the plie, no problem. For the rest of us mere mortals, you will have to lean forward slightly. So here's the scoop, gang. One more round and then we're done. Let's do one more rep. Time. All right, you ready? Chest press, so push. Push muscles working. Elbows slightly in front of the shoulders, and then wrists and elbows lined up, and press straight up on the exhale. Time. Roll yourself up. Bird dog rows. We're starting with the left arm rowing. So let's get the wrists under the shoulders to begin with. Knees apart under the hips. Tuck the toes under. Extend your right leg. And now the opposite arm. Now pay attention because I just caught myself doing it. Make sure that this right shoulder isn't jammed up to your ear. So I just had to readjust myself. So a lot more challenging than it looks, doesn't it? Actually, you know what? This does look challenging. <laughs> so I hope somebody walks in right now when you're doing this. They'll be thoroughly impressed with you. <laughs> One more. Time. All right, so we tuck the toes under, get that. Knees apart underneath the hips. Now let's extend your left leg, get a level with your ground, get the hips squared, and now opposite arm lifts up and go. I had the cutest comment on the YouTube channel last month 
<laughs> it was a guy, he said something to the effect that, I'm a man, my mom does your workouts. I watched them, they didn't look that hard, so my mom challenged me to an arm wrestle, and she beat me. <laughs> Way to go, mom. <laughs> One more rep. Time. Whew. All right, one dumbbell. It's in your right hand, so you're just mirroring me, okay? This leg off the ground. So again, you start with the hip hinge, and then we bend the knee. Ready? Find something stationary to stare at. Here we go. Down. Drive up. If your foot is cramping, that's kind of normal, right? This balance, it all starts with the muscles of the feet. That's why it's so important that we get out of our runners every so often and walk around in bare feet. Time. We've lost the muscle tone in our feet, okay? And tone doesn't mean nice looking muscles. It actually means the tone of the muscle, <laughs> the strength of it. <sighs> Here we go, ready? Other side. Um, so I encourage you. Maybe try a workout in bare feet. You know, this would be a good one. We used to say, because ooh, the organization I'm certified with requires you to say this in classes, that you have to wear runners when you work out in case you drop a dumbbell. I don't know what kind of runners you're wearing, but <laughs> barefoot or runners, that ain't gonna help if I drop a dumbbell. My runner's doing shit. <laughs> So, I would love for you to strengthen the bottoms of your feet, especially if you have bunions or if you're plagued with plantar fasciitis. Time, plie squat. See, a lot of people with plantar fasciitis stretching their calves, taking anti-inflammatories, when really, it's muscle weakness in the foot. Ready, set, and go. So our last exercise, we'll grab a sip of water, do a few stretches, and you can continue on with your day. Good, toes turned out. Good, knees tracking with those toes. Come all the way up so the legs are straight, and then lower all the way down. One more rep. Time. Great job, you. Let's bend the legs to get the dumbbells down. Woo. Cheers to you. Grab a sip of water, but don't take off on me yet. We need to stretch you out first. Ah, tastes good, doesn't it? All right, let's get the um, front shoulder, the pecs, and the hip with this great little stretch here. It's kind of awkward, but it's a good one. On your belly, arms extended, lined up with the shoulders, palms facing down. Lift your left leg straight up, bend the knee, roll onto that right arm, and then slide this left hand in front of the chest to help peel this left side of the body off the floor more and roll more onto that back arm. To get into the hip, really walk this foot up towards the hand as best you can. And as mentioned, you'll feel this into the chest, front shoulder and hip. And then lift that knee up so it's not dropped. You wanna lift it up so we can get really good hip extension through here. Two more breaths. And release. All right, left arm extends and palm is down, yes? Good. Right leg lifts first. Now bend at the knee, roll onto that left arm, shoulder. Pick up that right hand, place it in front of the chest, and then use that right arm to push yourself and roll yourself more onto that left side. Good, walk that right foot towards the left hand more. Lift up the knee slightly so you can feel that extension through the hip. 
Two more breaths. And release. On your belly, left heel to bum, other fist under the forehead. Keep the knees close together. See if you can get the heel to touch the bum. Let's release that. Other fist under the forehead, other heel to the bum. Bring the knees close together once again and see if you can get the heel to the bum on this side. Lower down, prop yourself up onto your forearms. Elbows under shoulders, shoulders away from the earlobes. Extend the spine, so really drop the belly to the ground and look up slightly. Getting extension in the low back, stretching the front of the body while we do this. And now let's bring the feet a little closer together and continue with this. Two more breaths. Press yourself up, big toes together, knees are open. Walk your hands to the left side of your mat, right hand on top of left, and now sit back, strengthening, not strengthening, pardon me, stretching the right side of your body. <laughs> Walk your hands to the other direction, left hand on top of right, left hip pushes away now. Get into the lats. So these are your pull muscles that we're stretching right now. Release, have a seat on your tush, both legs extended, toes pointed straight up. Legs together, sit up nice and tall. Use your arms to press yourself forward to stretch into the hamstrings, okay? Your hinge muscles and your glutes. And only if it feels good for you and is right for you, bring your arms forward and just let yourself fall forward into a fold. Now feeling a little bit more into the upper back and neck. Walk yourself back up. And we did it! Hey, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you're not already a part of our Over 50 Fitness community or our Patreon community, what the heck? Why not? <laughs> if you're here on YouTube, all the information's down below. We would love to see you there. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you next workout. Bye. Hey there, good looking. Listen, if you want to strengthen every muscle in your body in a functional movement pattern, in a functional movement pattern, Ooh, PJ, I need to take 101 English again. Mm -hmm. We will be focusing on five foundational movement patterns. Push, pull, hinge, squat. That's four. <laughs> the fifth one is an utter mystery to us all.